Good morning. Today we are going to start a new chapter which is aggregate demand and aggregate supply. The word aggregate means total. So we are going to talk about the supply curve for all products in the country and the demand curve for all products in the country. Let's start with aggregate supply. Aggregate supply is relationship between price and quantity of real GDP supplied, just like supply of a product shows the relationship between the quantity supplied of a product and the general price the price of this product it is the same it is the relationship between the price the general price level of the country and the quantity of real gdp supplied what about quantity of real gdp supplied It is the total quantity that firms plan to produce during a specific period of time. But in case of aggregate, we have to differentiate between aggregate supply in the short run and in the long run. In the short run, we can increase factors of production, we can increase resources used in the production, so there is a positive relationship between price and the quantity supplied. Of course, it is quantity of real GDP supplied. So we can draw short run aggregate supply curve as a positively sloped curve. This is real GDP. And this is the price level. It's a positively sloped curve. So this is short run aggregate supply positively slope because of the positive relationship between price and the quantity supplied. As price increases, producers are willing to sell more so they can produce more and supply more. What about the long run? In the long run, the economy is at full employment level. So we are going to produce a quantity, a fixed quantity, which is known as potential GDP. So potential GDP is independent of the price level. 
as this is the maximum level of production that can be produced in this country. So it will be parallel to y x. This is long run aggregate supply curve. And it's known as potential GDP. So long run aggregate supply curve is vertical at potential GDP. So in case of long run aggregate supply curve, this is the long run aggregate supply. As price increases, quantity is constant at the potential level of real GDP which is the maximum production. At this point, the economy is at full employment, which means that there is no cyclical unemployment, only fractional and the structural unemployment in the economy. Okay. While in case of Short run aggregate supply curve it is positively sloped which means as price increases from B1 to B2 quantity supplied is going to increase from Q1 to Q2 What are the factors that affect aggregate supply? What are the factors that cause shifts of aggregate supply? Here we have to differentiate between short run and long run. There are two main factors. Number one, a change in potential GDP. Potential GDP it changes because of three main reasons. Number one, increase in full employment level. that the total population is 1,000. Okay. In case of full employment, about 950 of them are employed and 50 the natural rate of unemployment. In this case, the, the number of total population is going to increase from 1,000 to 1,200 and the the full employment rate is going to increase from 950 to say 1100. So this means that potential GDP is going to increase. Number two. Increase in the quantity of capital. new machines, building equipment, and so on. And number four, uh, sorry, and number three, improvement in technology or advance in technology. These three factors will cause an increase in potential GDP and a rightward shift of long run aggregate supply curve and uh, rightward shift of short run aggregate supply curve. Number two. A 
a change in money wage rates. If workers are going to ask for more wages, so cost of production is going to increase. As a result, supply will decrease. Factor number one will affect long-run aggregate supply and short-run aggregate supply curve. While factor number two will affect short-run aggregate supply curve only. As in case of long-run aggregate supply curve, the economy is at full employment level. So change in wages is not going to affect the employment in the economy. So if you know that, there is an improvement in technology. As a result, potential GDP is going to increase and short-run aggregate supply curve will shift to the right and long-run aggregate supply curve will shift to the right. Now let's assume that Money wages are expected to decrease or are decreasing. So cost of production is going to decrease. You can produce more. So supply is going to increase. As a result, short-run aggregate supply curve will shift to the right. And there is no effect on long-run aggregate supply curve. What about aggregate demand? Actually, aggregate demand shows the relationship between the quantity of real GDP demanded and the price level. Quantity of real GDP demanded can be calculated as a summation of consumption expenditure, investment expenditure, government expenditure, and export minus imports. So aggregate demand, or Y, can be calculated as C plus I plus G plus X minus M. It's negatively sloped. There is no long and short run aggregate demand. It's only one aggregate demand curve. What are the factors that affect or shift the aggregate demand curve? Number one, expectations. Expectations is related to any type of expectation, such as you expect that inflation rate is going to change, or you expect that income is going to increase, or you expect that future profits are going to increase, any kind of expectations. If you expect that your income is going to increase, so demand will increase. If you expect that future prices are going to increase, which is higher inflation rate in the future, so your demand now is going to increase and so on. 
So expectations mainly has a positive impact. If you expect an increase in the product, an increase in your income, an increase in inflation, so aggregate demand will increase and demand curve will shift to the right. Number two, fiscal and monetary policy. What is the difference between fiscal policy and monetary policy? Fiscal policy is related to Ministry of Finance. There are two main tools that can be used by policymaker with respect to fiscal policy. Taxes and government expenditure. While monetary policy is under the control of monetary authority, which is the central bank. And the main tool used by um, the monetary authority is the money supply. And this can be affected by interest rates. Let's start with fiscal policy. As we said, there are two main tools, taxes and government expenditure. Return back to our equation AD equals C plus R plus G plus X minus M. Taxes will affect the disposable income and hence will affect C. So if the government is going to increase tax, so disposable income is going to decrease and consumption will decrease. As a result, aggregate demand will decrease. So an increase in tax rate will cause a leftward shift for the aggregate demand curve. What about government expenditure? If the government is going to increase G and G is one of the components of aggregate demand as G increases aggregate demand is going to increase as well so the relationship with respect to taxes is negative relationship while with respect to G is a positive relationship monetary policy If money supply is going to increase, let's take a um, very simplified example of money supply. Let's assume that money supply is money in the hand of the public, the, uh, the money you have, okay? If this money is going to increase, so you are going to demand more and more goods and services. As a result, aggregate demand is going to increase as well. The government can affect money supply through interest rates. When you are going to make a deposit in the bank, you are going to get interest rate return. So if the government increases interest rates, this will encourage people to save more and consume less. As a result, aggregate demand will decrease. Okay, return back to factor number three, which is world economy. What's world economy? Aggregate demand is affected by world economy in two different ways. Number one, through exchange rates. What's meant by exchange rate? Exchange rate 
is the value of one currency in terms of another. Let's say, for example, I'm going to exchange one dollar for 17 LE. So this is the exchange rate of dollar. 1 for 17. So if you expect that exchange rate is going to change. So this is going to affect the export and import of the product. Now let's assume that price of dollar will increase. The exchange rate of dollar will increase, which means that one dollar will be exchanged for 18 LE. So with respect for exporters, they can ex um, they can buy more products with one dollar. So exports is going to increase. While with respect for importers, the price of a product will be equivalent to 18 instead of 17 Egyptian pounds. As a result, imports is going to decrease. So exchange rate is going to affect the decision of the producer or the consumer whether to export or import a product from abroad or not. The second point is foreign income. Income of foreign people. If you return back to the import function, where M is a function of income of the country. So this means if income in USA increases, we are going to demand more of our goods. So exports of Egypt is going to increase. So foreign income is going to affect export in aggregate demand function. And the aggregate demand is going to increase. So if the factor is going to increase aggregate demand, aggregate demand curve will shift to the right and vice versa. What about equilibrium in the market? We have to differentiate between equilibrium in the short run and in the long run. In case of short run, this is aggregate demand curve and this is short run aggregate supply curve. This is point of equilibrium at whatever real GDP and the price level B1. If for example the government is going to decrease taxes, taxes will decrease. Taxes is one of the factors that affect the aggregate demand. As a result, disposable income is going to increase, consumption will increase, and that is going to increase and shift it to the right. So in this case, real GDP is going to increase from GDP1 to GDP2, and the price level is going to increase from B1 to B2. And the same if one of the factors that affect 
short run aggregate supply curve aggregate supply curve is going to shift to the left or to the right what about long run This is long run aggregate supply curve and this is aggregate demand curve. Point of intersection is point of equilibrium. But in this case, we are going to be at potential level of GDP. So if taxes decrease, as a result, disposable income is going to increase. Consumption will increase, aggregate demand will shift to the right. So in this case, potential GDP is going to be constant, which means that this is the maximum, this is the maximum level of production. We can't increase produ production beyond this point. But Price level is going to increase from B1 to B2, which means that inflation rate in the country is going to increase. لو لقيت الدنيا صعبة عليكم شوية خلاص يبقى مش هنقوله يعني وهنكتفي المرة الجاية تبقى ريفاجن وخلاص طيب النهاردة بنتكلم على الأجريجت ديماند والأجريجت سبلاي هما شبه قوي الديماند والسبلاي اللي خدناهم في المايكرو الفرق بس ان انا بتكلم على مش بتكلم على برودكت انا بتكلم على الديماند بتاع البلد كلها بتكلم على السبلاي بتاع البلد كلها فانا بقول الأجريجت سبلاي هو نفس الديفينيشن ان هو شوز ذا ريليشن شيب بتوين البرايس بس المرة دي بدل ما بقول برايس بقول جنرال برايس ليفل بدل ما بقول quantity supplied بقول quantity of real GDP supplied الفرق في السبلاي عندي ان انا بفرق ما بين السبلاي في الشورت ران وفي اللونج ران طب ايه الفرق انا بقول في اللونج ران الايكونومي بيكون عند حاله اللي هي الفول امبلويمنت طب هل الفول امبلويمنت ده معناها ان انا ان انا ما عنديش ما عنديش ما عنديش بطاله خالص لا احنا اتفقنا قبل كده ان الفول امبلويمنت معناها ان انا عندي ناتشرال ريت اوف ان امبلويمنت يعني ايه يعني عندي structure و fractional إنما الأساس إن ما عنديش cyclical طيب يبقى إحنا هنا هنفرق ما بين production في short run وفي long run في short run هو عادي النجد positive stop اللي إحنا متعودين عليه إنما في long run بيكون vertical parallel to y x عند level معين بسميه potential GDP هو ده الماكسيمم at full employment rate زي برضو ما كنا بناخد في المايكرو احنا في عندنا فاكتورز بتعمل شيفت للدماند والسبلاي كيربس ايه الفاكتورز اللي هتعمل شيفت بقى للاجريجت سبلاي عندنا حاجتين التشينج في البوتنشال جي دي بي البوتنشال جي دي بي ده اللي هو الماكسيمم اللي احنا نقدر ننتجه طب ايه اللي يغير الماكسيمم ده ان انا يبقى عندي كابيتال جديده ان انا يبقى عندي امبروفمنت في التكنولوجي او ان انا يبقى عندي في فاكتورز اوف برودكشن جديده يعني مثلا الليبر بتاعتي زادت فدول كده معناها ان البوتنشال جي دي بي هيزيد يعني يحصل شيفت للكيرف تو ذا رايت سواء كان شورت ران او لونج ران في عندنا فاكتور تاني هو الماني ويج احنا العمال عاوزين نزود المرتبات بتاعتنا فطلبنا نزود مرتب طلبنا نزود مرتب دي معناها ان الكوست اوف برودكشن للبروديوسر هيزيد طب هو كده هيزود الانتاج لا طبعا هيقلله طيب هل الفاكتور ده بيافكت اللونج ران لا احنا في اللونج ران عندنا فول امبلويمنت فبالتالي مش هي الويجز مش هتاثر في حاجه هي بتاثر فين في الشورت ران بس يبقى احنا التو فاكتورز بتوعنا نم بيافكتوا الشورت ران انما الاولاني اللي هو البوينت بوتنشال هو ده الوحيد اللي بيافكت اللونج ران نيجي بعد كده للاجريجت ديماند كيرف الأجريجت ديماند هو ده اللي احنا كنا بنقول عليه y plus c plus i plus g plus x minus m هو مجموعة ديماند بتاعة ال 4 sectors بتاعي هو negatively sloped زي ما كنا بنقول على الديماند كيرف بالظبط طيب ايه هي الفاكتورز اللي بتعمل له شيفت عندنا 3 main factors number one expectations انا توقعت ان الاسعار هتزيد فدلوقتي حالا هشتري اكتر انا توقعت ان الانكم بتاعي هيزيد فدلوقتي حالا هشتري اكتر 
انا بروديوسر وتوقعت ان البروفيت بتاعتي هتزيد فدلوقتي حالا هشتري حاجات اكتر تمام يبقى احنا الاكسبكتيشنز دي لها بوزيتيف امباكت على الديماند هشتري اكتر معناها ان الاجرج الديماند هيزيد يعني الاجرج الديماند كيرف والشيفت تو ذا رايت طيب فاكتور نمبر 2 فيزيكال اند موناتري بوليسي فيزيكال بوليسي دي مسؤوله عنها وزاره الماليه بيبقى فيها حاجتين يعني تو مين مين تولز التاكسز والجفرمنت اكسبنتشر التاكسز انا بقول الحكومه زودت الضرايب الضرايب لما تزيد معناها ان الديسبوزبل انكم هيقل الديسبوزبل انكم ده بيافكت الكونسمشن يبقى الكونسمشن بتاعي هيقل كونسمشن واحده من الكومبوننتس بتاعه الاجريجيت ديماند يبقى هي كمان هتقل يعني هيحصل شيفت للاجريجيت ديماند كيرف تو ذا ليفت طيب الجي الجي هي اصلا كومبوننت هو الجفرمنت اكسبندتشر لو الحكومه زودته يعني الاجريجيت ديماند هيزيد يعني هيحصل له شيفت تو ذا رايت نيجي للتول الثانيه اللي عندنا اللي هي المونيتري بوليسي المونيتري بوليسي دي اللي هي بتعملها هو السنتر المسؤول عنها السنترال بانك اللي هو البنك المركزي طيب هي مني بتتاثر بحاجتين ماني سبلاي وانترست ريت ماني سبلاي احنا زودنا الفلوس اللي مع الناس الحكومه زودت الفلوس دي ايا كانت الطريقه اللي زادت بيها الناس بقى معاها فلوس كتير فايه اللي هيحصل هيزودوا الديماند على الجودز والسيرفيسز فالاجريج ديماند كيرف والشيفت تو ذا رايت طيب الحكومه قررت تزود سعر الصرف سعر سعر الفايده انا دلوقتي لما بحط فلوسي في البنك البنك بيديني عليها فوائد فلما اجي اقول الفوائد دي زادت الناس هتعمل ايه مش هتشتري دلوقتي حاجات وتروح تشيل فلوسها في البنك عشان تكسب الفوائد الكتير فيبقى بنقول الانترست ريت لو زاد يبقى الاجريج ديماند هيحصل له ايه هيقل لان الناس هتقلل كونسومشن وتزود سيفنجز اخر طول اخر فاكتور عندنا هو الورلد ايكونومي احنا بنتكلم دلوقتي على الجزء الاخير اللي هو الاكس والام طيب لو الاكس الاكس تشينج ريت بتاعتي زاد طيب ايه هو الاكس تشينج ريت هو البرايس اوف وان كارنسي ان تيرمز اوف انس يعني لما اقول انا هبل الدولار ب 17 جنيه يبقى ده الاكس تشينج ريت بتاع الدولار طيب لما اقول ان سعر الدولار زاد يعني بدل ما كنت هشتريه ب 17 جنيه بقيت هشتريه ب 18 جنيه طيب دلوقتي انا ببيع البرودكت الناس اللي هم بيشتروا مني من بره يعني هيلاقوا ان البرودكت بتاعي بقى ارخص بدل ما كانوا بيشتروه الدولار كان بيجيب حاجات بما يعادل 17 جنيه بقى هيجيب حاجات بما يعادل 18 جنيه فبقى كده برودكت بالنسبه لهم ارخص فهيشتروا مني اكتر طب نيجي للعكس انا كنت بشتري حاجه من بره بثمنها دولار فكنت كده بما يعادل 17 جنيه دلوقتي هيبقى يعادل قيمتها كام هيبقى يعادل قيمتها 18 جنيه فبقت بالنسبه لي اغلى بدل ما كنت هشتري الحاجه ب 17 جنيه هشتريها ب 18 يبقى انا هزود اللي هشتري منها ولا هقلله لا هقلله يبقى في الحاله دي لما الاكس تشينج ريت بتاعه الدولار زادت يبقى الاكسبرس بتاعتنا هتزيد والامبرس بتاعتنا هتقل يبقى الاجريج ديماند هيزيد يبقى الاجريج ديماند كيرف والشيفت تو ذا رايت طب الحاجه الثانيه الانكم بتاعه الدوله اللي انا بصدر لها انا بصدر لليونايتد ستيتس والانكم بتاعهم زاد فهيعملوا ايه هيشتروا مني يعني الامبورت بتاعتهم مني يعني الاكسبورت بتاعتي انا هتزيد يعني الاجريج ديماند كيرف هيزيد هيحصل له شيفت تو ذا رايت اخر حاجه اتكلمنا عليها هي الايكوليبريم بس هنفرق ما بين ايكوليبريم في الشورت ران وايكوليبريم في اللونج ران في الشورت ران هيبقى عندي positively sloped supply curve و negatively sloped demand curve point of intersection هي point of equilibrium لو حصل تشينج في اي حاجه زودت الديماند الديماند كيرف هيحصل له شيفت تو ذا رايت وبالتالي ال جي دي بي هيزيد والبرايسز هتزيد طيب انما لو خدنا نفس الكيس وعملناها على اللونج ران لا انا واصل للبوتنشال جي دي بي اللي هو الماكسيمم مش هينفع ازود برودكشن فكل اللي هيحصل احنا بنتخانق على شويه كوموديتيز فاللي هيحصل ايه ان سعرها هيزيد ده 
Thank you. Thank you.